So we've been meditating the last few days how St. Paul uh, is speaking quite bluntly on different occasions to his people and how we actually, we need that. We need to be sometimes told very kind of frankly, this is out of line, this is what we need to be doing. Like in all fields, you need clear leadership, whether it's politics, sports, uh, faith, you need clear leadership. You need someone to show the way forward. You know, it's been this way from the beginning. So at times uh, when there's a wee bit of a deviation, uh, you need someone to say, back here, whoa, whoa, that way is going to lead to ruin. Okay, so St. Paul needs to do this. Okay, but one of the things that he asks, that, that he tells, that he says today, uh, comes across as almost contradictory, especially to a Jewish ear. This would have really jarred. He said, those who rely on keeping the law are under a curse. Right? Those who rely on keeping the law are under a curse. Because for the Jews, the, the, the law, the law, was, the law was, was, was everything. Uh, obeying God's law. Uh, that's what they had to do, surely. I mean, you have the Ten Commandments. There were other, many, many other stipulations that the, the, the Jews had put together. They had collected over the years. I think it was 600 and something, I should know that, but it was 600 and something or other uh, particular laws that they had as to how they were supposed to live. But the problem was, you see, uh, and it's, it's, it's that way also today, that you can live according to the law and still get the intention all wrong. Okay? So, like, Jesus, on numerous occasions, uh, speaks to the, the scribes, the Pharisees, at the time, for the fact that they obeyed the law, but forgot the heart. Right? They obeyed the law, but forgot compassion, mercy. Forgiveness, you know, they lay all these burdens on people's shoulders. Would they lift a finger to help them? Not they. You know, so they're obeying the law, but he says they're like whitewashed tombs. That's how he describes them, right? Hypocrites, he calls them, on numerous occasions. Okay, so the law on its own isn't going to be good enough. Like, for example, uh, because you're not allowed to work on the Sabbath day, if they saw someone who was in need, they'd go, can't help you, can't work. It's the Sabbath. Poor you. I'm obeying the law. You know what I mean? So things like that, you go, well, just help the fella. I mean, give him a bit of bread, isn't it? Do you know? Uh, or you, were, you weren't allowed to travel very far on a Sabbath. And there was a distance known as a Sabbath walk. That was all, that was the, the maximum distance you were allowed to travel any more than that was considered work. So, but if you were traveling on water, you were allowed to travel to your destination because you couldn't get stuck out in the middle of a lake and be stuck there all night, you could get killed. So if you were traveling on water, you could travel as far as you needed to go. So then what they would do is they'd get a big bag of water, put that on their donkey, and then kind of it's like, <laughs> on a like, like a moving water bed, and then you could go where you needed to go because I'm, I'm traveling on water, I'm obeying the law. So this kind of thing, you missed the point, like you've completely missed the point. So same with us today, you see, we can, we can obey the law uh, of our faiths, or at least some of the minimum laws, you know, don't kill, right? And as we've said a million times here, you know, go to Mass on Sunday. So you don't kill, you don't go to Mass on Sunday, so I'm justified. What more do you want? Well, see, there's, there's so much more to our faith, there's so much more to our relationship with God than just not killing people, right, and, going, and, and giving God the minimum of 45 minutes on a Sunday. There's way more to our faith now. I'm not saying we have to kind of give more and more. It's not about giving. It's about a relationship, though. When, it's, when there's a relationship there, you don't even count the giving. It's just like in, in family. You know, does a mom sit down at the end of the day and calculate how many hours she has spent changing nappies and, and you know, cooking meals and, and, and tidying up? I suppose that would be fairly easy to calculate, wouldn't it, really? I got up at half seven, so from half seven to <laughs> ten o'clock or whatever it was. Uh, but you don't sit, when, when you love, you don't, you don't tot these things up and calculate them. Love just gives. Love just gives. So this is what St. Paul, this is what Jesus uh, is talking about, the, the idea of getting back to the, not just obeying the law, but understanding the intention behind the law, the motivation behind the law, the love behind the law. Because if we miss the love behind the law, you can actually use the law to not help people. You, know, like you weren't allowed to heal on the Sabbath. If they saw Jesus heal and said, oh, he helped someone on the Sabbath. That's work. You. <laughs> I mean, they actually accused him because he helped someone on the Sunday. He cured someone on the Sunday. You know what I mean? So the law had then was preventing them from doing good. Completely missed the point. Completely missed the point. Um, there's one line that really strikes me out of today's gospel. Where Jesus says, he who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. 
Now, this is all said in the context of, of unclean spirits and spiritual warfare. Jesus is speaking very clearly about this. And I just when, when I read this line, it's just, it, what really struck me was uh, a conversation that I had with a priest friend not so long ago. Uh, and he said he was talking to a lady in his parish. And she's, uh, again, by, by the standards of the, of the law, she's quite a good lady, right? So she's part of the parish pastoral council, um, starting minister of the Eucharist, on the flower committee, all those kind of things. So it helps out in the church an awful lot. Okay. But uh, they were talking, and she was saying different things. She was arguing different things with this priest friend of mine. We'll call him Father Tom. Hopefully I can stick to that name. So she was arguing with Father Tom, saying that, uh, you know, ash the church now, I've been telling now everyone, what the church needs to do is the church needs to ordain women, and the church needs to, you know, kind of modernize its teachings and kind of change all these kind of things that are just getting in the way of, of our modern uh, mentality, and the church needs to change this and this and this and this and this and this. And he said to her, he said, do you realize, though, that by saying that, you're actually, you're two steps from where you should be, okay? You're two steps from where you should be. So you're opposing church teaching when what we actually should be doing is not only agreeing with church teaching, but we should be teaching church teaching, right? So not only should we be like, you know, not opposing it, we should be agreeing with it, but not only kind of just, yeah, yeah, I suppose that's what the church teaches. So This is what we're actually supposed to be witnessing to and telling people about and defending, right? So I think there are maybe more people than maybe they realize are back here actually fighting the church, actually fighting its teachings, and then wondering why that's not particularly attractive. How, why, like, why that doesn't win people for the church? I mean, show me where it has worked, where people oppose the church teaching, and then because of that, the churches are filled. Show me where it's worked, anywhere in the world. You know what I mean? It just, it, it doesn't, because a house divided against itself cannot stand. Jesus says so. You know, so imagine like, because not only then, you see, if, if, I'm, if I'm fighting church teaching, who am I fighting? Am I fighting the Pope? Am I fighting the local bishop? I'm fighting all of the saints, my amazing theologians, people far smarter than us, all of heaven, I'm fighting all of these good, holy people throughout the world who believe what the church teaches and are, and are defending it. That, that's who I'm against. You know what I mean? It's like you, you set yourself against all of the saints for the last 2,000 years, but I know better. It's, just, it's, it's, a, very, it's a, very, a very dangerous place to be. Uh, so not only, like I say, if we find ourselves, and don't get me wrong, there, there might be aspects of church teaching that I, I find difficult to understand. You know, I don't get it. I don't understand why. Not understanding why is one thing, right? Telling people the church is wrong, that's another, okay? If you don't understand something, you look it up, Google it, right? Google it, but, but when you Google it, go to Catholic pages for the answer, okay? Don't go to atheist.com for the answers as to why the church believes in things because you're not going to get the right answer. Find good sites, right? There, there, there are Catholic answers. There are good sites out there. I go to a Catholic website and have a look through, and it'll, show, it'll give you the Bible verses that explain why, where this comes from, and it'll tell you where the councils have defined it and cleared it all up, and it'll tell you the saints that have defended it. You know, it's all there. So really, these days, it's really easy to find. So we have to be, be careful like that, that, that these words, I mean, imagine like, and I was, uh, I was talking to, to that friend of ours um, who's studying theology at the moment, and her, her professor for scripture is just, you know, tearing Jesus apart, basically saying he's racist and so on and so forth. He's biased and this kind of thing. He's, he's imperfect in his, in, in his humanity and he's learning from, from people and he's conditioned by his culture and all these kind of rubbish things that have been around for ages. Um, and I just thought, imagine like if you could have a conversation with him. Imagine if you could say to him, dear professor, sir, smart person, what if you are wrong? So you, I mean, you have these ideas which are not backed by any saint or any major theologian in the Catholic Church. What if you're wrong? And you're just after telling two or three hundred people in your lecture theatre that Jesus is racist and biased and so on and so forth, and they go out believing that. What if you're wrong? Can you imagine the responsibility that you have before God? And what if you're standing before the Lord one day and Jesus says, he who is not with me is against me. 
He who does not gather with me scatters. And you, my friend, scattered. Imagine, like, just the weight of responsibility that we have when we speak in the name of Jesus, like, to not go off on our own tangents and, and teach my opinion. I heard another priest say something very, very profound, you know. People came to me looking for Jesus, and I gave them me. Do you know, any preacher, priest, theologian, whatever, people come to us looking for Jesus. If they leave only having got us, they've got nothing. They still go home starving. So when people come to us looking for the truth, they're looking for Jesus. They're not looking for you. Get over yourself. <laughs> like, they're looking for Jesus. That's where you're supposed to bring him. He who is not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters. This is it's very, very serious stuff. So St. John Henry Newman, the saint that we celebrate today, uh, he was an Anglican uh, pastor for years, and when he converted, it was, it was somewhat scandalous in the church at the time. But he went on to become a cardinal and indeed a saint. But uh, the, the opening prayer there quotes one of his most famous poems, Lead Kindly Light. Uh, it's a song also, I'm not sure if you, you may have heard it, or younger people here probably haven't because it isn't set to dance music. Uh, but but um, the original is lovely. And uh, we pray it in the, in the Liturgy of the Hours as well. But I'll just finish today by quoting some of this uh, beautiful poem, which I think is very, very relevant to our own times when you think of like the coronavirus and difficulty and dissent within the church and so on and so, on and so forth. You, just, you read this and you think, wow, we have, we've been here before and we've come through it. Lead kindly light amid the encircling gloom Lead thou me on. The night is dark and I am far from home. Lead thou me on. Keep thou my feet. I do not ask to see the distant scene one step enough for me. I was not ever thus, nor prayed that thou shouldst lead me on. I loved to choose and see my path, but now lead thou me on. I loved the garish day, and spite of fears, pride ruled my will. Remember not past years. Amen.